For those of you who have never heard of Deadpool, you may want to get to know some of the other characters in the Marvel Universe before introducing yourself to the Merc with a Mouth. He can be a bit abrasive. But for those of you in the SolidWorks community ready for an awesome Deadpool tutorial, check out our four-part series where we'll be running through working with imported mesh geometry to create this Deadpool tool holder. There's no better place for a maker to store all of his sharp tools than in Deadpool's skull. Don't worry, he can take it. Before diving into part one of the series, I'd like to give a shout out to Britt Michelson, who put together a great instructable on designing and building a similar Deadpool knife block, and who supplied the original mesh file that we'll be working with. Take a look at the video description below with instructions on how to download the mesh file I used, as well as the completed SolidWorks model we're creating in this tutorial series. Let's kick off part one of the series by getting to know the various options for importing mesh files into SolidWorks. I have a new part file open here, so let's navigate to open, then here in the drop-down where it says All Files, I'm going to choose Mesh Files instead. This could be an STL file, an OBJ file, as well as a few other file formats. Now notice this Options button pops up. Let's enter the Mesh Options window, and here you can choose to import the mesh as a graphics body, a solid body, or a surface body. And you can choose what units your mesh file is in, so make sure you know your units before importing the mesh, or it will come in at the wrong size. For now, let's take a look at what happens when we import this as a graphics body. So here we have our Deadpool bust as a graphics body. The graphics body is nice to look at, but it's not really usable in SolidWorks. It can be rotated, but doesn't contain any surface or solid data, so we can't manipulate the model. So let's reopen this mesh and go back into the mesh options area. And we'll attempt to open it as a solid body instead. This typically takes longer to process the model, and keep in mind there's a limit to how large of a mesh you can import into SolidWorks as a solid or surface body. So just to give you a little mesh education, or mesh education, sorry. A mesh is a collection of polygons, which are typically triangles or quadrilaterals, that are connected to define a shape. These polygons are also called facets. For complex organic shapes, the finer or more detailed the mesh is, the more facets it contains. What SolidWorks is doing when importing an STL as a solid or surface is it's converting each one of those facets into a surface. If the mesh you're importing is watertight, it can then combine all of those surfaces into a solid model. As of this recording, you can import STL files as a solid or surface body which have up to 500,000 facets, which is quite a lot. And importing a mesh that large may take quite a while and bog down your computer system a bit. In this case, I was able to reduce the facet count or decimate the original Deadpool bust STL file to contain around 10,000 facets, so it imported pretty quickly and wasn't too slow to work with on my workstation. Again, check out the video description below for instructions on where to download the decimated Deadpool mesh file. Depending on how the mesh was created in its native software, it could come into the SolidWorks space positioned a little funny, so I'm going to reposition the model relative to the origin. First, I want to make sure the bottom surface is perfectly flat, so sketching on the right plane, I'm just making a solid line that's 0.01 inches offset from the bottom faces of the bust. Make sure this solid line juts out on both sides of the model. Then exit the sketch and navigate to Insert, Features, Split. With the line sketch selected as the Split tool, click on Cut Part. Then, in the resulting bodies area, select the thin bottom section and ensure the Consume Cut Bodies option is selected to discard this portion of the body. Now we can reference this bottom face as a flat plane. So let's move the body using the Move Copy Bodies tool found in the Features Command Manager. In the Move Copy Bodies Property Manager, first select the body to move, and this tool defaults to the area where you can either translate or rotate the selected body or we can enter this constraints area to move the body using various mates, just like you would in a SOLIDWORKS assembly file. Here I'm just making the bottom face of the part flush with the top plane. Now we can use the same tool to center the part over the origin using a reference sketch. Sketching on the bottom face, I'm just drawing a box that's coincident with the edges of the base. This will help me find the vertical center line of the part.
and I'll make sure to add a sketch point to the center point of that center line. Now exit the sketch and re-enter the Move Copy Bodies tool. This time, instead of using constraints, we'll go back to the Translate or Rotate options. Here you can enter a few translation references to move the part from and to. I'll first select the center point we just sketched to move the part from. Then I'll select the origin to move the part to. And we want to move the original part, so make sure the copy option is turned off. Alright SolidWorks users, we've successfully imported Deadpool's head into SolidWorks, and we have repositioned him in the work area. Stay tuned for part 2 of the series where we'll begin manipulating the model to start turning this simple bust into a desktop tool holder.